solving quadratic equations by finding square roots. This goes along with section 9.1 of your textbook. Over the past few days, we've been simplifying radicals. In this case, our radicand is 80, so we want to split it into 16, which is the largest perfect square factor of 80, and the other factor that multiplies to be 80. Split that into separate radicals, and then we pull out 4 because we know that the square root of 16 is, is 4. We've used a lot of different strategies. For example, we could make a tree with all of the prime factors of 80. So broken down into its prime factors, 80 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And we'd look for twins. For example, I see two 2's here. So I have a 2 squared on the inside. That means I'll have a 2 on the outside. Two more 2's here. So I have another pair of 2's. The square root of 2 squared again is another 2, and my 5 is left on the inside because it does not have a twin, which also gives me 4 root 5. Or I could even take 80 and divide it by all of the perfect squares that are reasonable to see what the largest one is that goes in evenly. However, now we're going to actually be solving equations using these strategies. Up until now, we've been using the positive square roots of most numbers. For example, the square root of 9 is the positive version, 3. Or if we see the negative sign, then we take the negative square root. So the negative square root of 9 is negative 3. But now that we are actually drawing in the square root symbol, we're going to use this symbol right here. This plus minus means the positive or negative version. So we have two ways to write this. The positive or negative square root of 9, we can either write as positive or negative 3. That's one way to write it. Or, for your answer, you can write 3 or negative 3. So these are two different ways to write our answer for the positive or negative square root of 9. To get your note sheet, we'll do the first few examples together. So for every quadratic equation, we want to use inverse operations to isolate x squared, kind of like we're used to isolating x using our inverse operations. Then we'll take the square root of each side of the equation, because whatever we do to one side, we need to balance the equation by doing the same thing to the other side. We will have to remember to take the positive and negative square roots, and then we'll simplify the roots if necessary. So for example one, it says x squared equals 25. So x squared is already isolated, so I'm going to take the positive and negative square root of each side. That symbol with the plus over the minus indicates the positive and negative version. So we get x equals positive or negative 5 because the square root of 25 is 5 because 25 is a perfect square. You can also write that as x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. The last step, which is optional, is to check your answer. So we could see that 5 squared, or if we put 5 back in for x, we get 25. We also can say negative 5 squared equals 25. It's a good idea to check them, even if you just do it in your head. The second one says 2x squared minus 10 equals 70. So we want to solve this by drawing our line. We add 10 to both sides, so we get 2x squared equals 80. Then we want to get rid of our coefficient of 2. So keep in mind what we learned last year. We get rid of our tag along first, and then we get rid of our sidekick. In other words, we get rid of the constant number before we get rid of our coefficient. It's kind of like the order, the opposite of the order of operations. So we divide both sides by 2, and we get x squared equals 40. Now we need to take the positive and negative square root of both sides. And on the left, we get x, but on the right, we get the positive and negative square root of 40. Now comes what we've been learning for the past few days. You need to use all of your strategies to simplify the square root of 40. So I pulled out 4, which is my greatest perfect square factor. And so I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. The square root of 4 is 2, so I can write this as the positive and negative 2 root 10 or 2 times the square root of 10. Let's look at example 3. 5x squared equals 500. I don't have any tag along, but I do need to divide both sides by 5 because that's my coefficient of x squared. So I have x squared 
equals 100. I like this because I know that 100 is a perfect square. So when I take the positive or negative square root of both sides, I get x equals positive or negative 10. And that's my final answer. You'll notice that some problems are much faster than others to do. It just depends on how much simplifying we have to do with our square roots and how much we have to do with inverse operations to isolate our x squared. Now try the six problems at the bottom of your paper. You may have already cut these and glued them onto the left side of your ISM. For every problem, remember to draw the line, isolate your x squared the same way we would have if it was an x, and then use what we know about square roots to take the positive or negative square root of both sides and simplify it. Some of your answers may end up being integers if we have perfect squares as our radicand. Some of our answers may end up being no real numbers if we end up with a negative radicand. And some of our answers may end up with something like 2 root 3, where we can simplify our radical, but we can't actually get an integer as an answer. Don't forget things that we've learned, especially last year, for isolating our variable. So if we have a coefficient that's a fraction, we would divide both sides by this fraction. In other words, we'd multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. If we have a variable on both sides, like x squared on both sides, it's just like we have x on both sides. So we would want to first move them to the same side, such as subtracting 6x squared from both sides or subtracting 5x squared from both sides. Good luck and happy spring. Still here.